Australia, home of the possum, cool surfer dudes, strange lingo, now worries mate, fair dinkum, lots of sunshine and the Bonza Barrier Reef. It's the biggest, most spectacular coral reef in the world and what's more, every creature is linked to another. Just imagine one huge family tree dating back 18 million years. From the minuscule to the mammoth to the miraculous, they're all connected in Barney's Barrier Reef. The reef games. Go on, Jeff. Ah, Barney's going for the javelin. And it's a drop in the sand. <laughs> Oh, well, he's going to get some stick for that one. And, uh, yes, Gemma here is going for the new world record in the coconut shot put. Uh, she's not shy, this girl. <laughs> she's staying true to form, yes. <coughs> oh, no, oh, no, she appears to have fouled and has dropped the coconut on her foot. Well, that was much better than Barney. He's boxing an Aussie kangaroo. <laughs> oh, and he's been knocked out. Kanga is the champion. <laughs> well, hopefully our ocean athletes will be more impressive. Yeah, I think they probably will be. <clears throat> <clears throat> the ocean is a training ground for some of the world's best athletes. Oh, yes, the ocean is full of sprinters, jumpers, even high divers, and they're all competing against each other every day to ha, 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 stay alive. It's time to see who are our ocean medal winners in The, the Reef Games. And welcome to the first race of the day. Our contestants are limbering up for what we hope will be an amazing contest between some of the best sprinters on the reef. Oh, the baby turtles are looking good, if a little stressed. Oh, yes, that's a funny way of warming up, I must say. Here are the soldier crabs representing Team Crustacean. Look promising, I think. Absolutely. And, of course, the octopus has the advantage of having eight legs. Uh, or is that arms? Yeah, it's very handy. OK, our contestants are at the starting line. Oh, and they're off. An amazing start by the baby turtles. Look at them go. Oh, watch out for the cameraman, little turtles. Oh, some of them are going a little off course. Hey! They've negotiated that hill turn very well, though. Over on the other track, the soldier crabs are not far behind. Some of them are even using their sideways running technique to gain an advantage. The octopus has chosen to only use two legs. Has he been overconfident, I wonder? Oh, and I'm just hearing here that the octopus is running on the wrong track. He's running on the water track, and as this is an open sand event, that may well disqualify him. Yes, I can confirm, controversially, the octopus has been disqualified. Oh, no! Oh, what a shame for the octopus team. They'll be optically devastated. Oh, the turtles and crabs are now neck and neck. Oh, I think we may have seen the baby turtles just creep ahead there. Oh. And, of course, they've been in training for this since birth. Ooh. As soon as they hatch, they need to get to the ocean as quickly as possible or face being eaten by predators. <laughs> ah, so it's a race of survival. No wonder these little fellas have such determination. Oh, yes, the turtles have got the gold for Team Reptile. They have got gold for Team Reptile. An amazing performance. Oh, dear, the soldier crabs have taken the result badly. They're corkscrewing themselves into the ground in disgust. Oh, I'm so pleased for them. You could see they really wanted to make it to the water where they'd be safer than on the beach. What an amazing start to our reef games. 
time for our first swimming event. Over to you, Gemma. <laughs> and now for one of the ocean's most popular events, speed swimming. Let's meet our three competitors. The terrific tuna. The remarkable remoras. And our sensational sharks. <laughs> Our terrific tuna are superbly streamlined and their secret technique is to warm up their blood so they can perform even in the coldest waters. The sensational sharks. They can swim fast, but not for long. Because they are cold-blooded, they lose heat more rapidly, so they end up using most of their energy to warm their blood, reserving fast swimming for special occasions like escape or attack. Our remoras are outsiders in this race, <laughs> capable of great swimming technique, but lacking in motivation. There's tension in the stadium as we wait for the whistle. And they're off. Oh, and the tuna are in the lead. They're racing at an amazing 43 miles per hour. Wow, our sharks are in second place. They won't like that. Oh, oh, it seems like the remoras have decided to latch onto the sharks, thinking that will give them an advantage. Oh, typical of remora behaviour. They're always looking for a free ride. Extremely controversial behaviour from the remoras there. Looks like they're hoping to take over the sharks by hitching a ride with them. Very cheeky. So now we have the tuna versus the sharks, with the remora still hanging on. A small little fact that might put you in the picture here. Tuna swim about 1.9 million kilometres in their lifetimes. That's like swimming around the entire world nearly 50 times. Incredible. And the terrific tuna bring home gold. What a sensational finish. Celebrate too much tuna. I haven't had my lunch yet. Yikes! I'm out of here. Oh well, we've had two spectacular races. We've had the beach sprint and the water event. So in our reef games, the super sprinting tuna are linked to our baby turtles because they're both speedier than their competitors. <laughs> Hi. And now for our free-form swimming event, the race where our contestants can choose their very own swimming style. We have three finalists, each with a completely unique way of swimming. These techniques have never been displayed in the games before, so tension on the reef is high. Let's meet our contestants. Representing the Nudibranchs is the Spanish Dancer. Hola, mes chicos. Yo soy el Big Fishy. My nombre is Danza Espanol. Limbering up there and representing the soft bodied invertebrates, we have the Flatworm. Hey! Yo, what's up? And from our starfish family, waiting on the coral touchline, we have the Feather Star. An amazing lift <clears throat> from the Spanish dancer, almost an aerobic <clears throat> style of swimming. He's gone for the stretch and crunch stroke. Phew. He must have amazing abs. What a workout. Indeed. But just look at the flatworm go. Such remarkable speedy ripples using his flat frame to freestyle through the water. And coming up on the outside lane, just look at the feather star go. Using all his ten arms for a multi-arm crawl. It's amazing what they can achieve, considering they have no eyes and no brain. Oh, and the Spanish dancer has hit an obstacle. The big red bass looks like he might gobble him up and ruin his chances. <laughs> Luckily, the nudibranch has toxic skin that tastes pretty foul. He might still be in with a chance. The Feather Star is no award-winning star today. He showed some initial promise, but has gone back to uh, just swaying by the coral. So it's between the Spanish dancer and the flatworm. Can a worm really win the gold? Oh, 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 and what a great finish by the flatworm. Phew, I'm done. He's flat, he's a worm, but today he's also a winner. The gold for freeform swimming goes to our fabulous flatworm. I'm doing this for worms everywhere, thanks to my fans, thanks to my other worm relatives, my mum, my dad, my brother, my sister, my sister's friend, down the road with a friend, yeah, and you. 
Um, OK. OK, thank you, Flatworm. He's linked to our other gold medal swimmer, the Tuna, as they both display a creative style of swimming. <laughs> it's time to sit back in your seats and open your packed lunches. Also take a deep breath for the long distance swimming category. First up, an all-time favourite and multi-medal winner, the Humpback Whale. Renowned for their long sea treks, they're a favourite in today's event. Um, I didn't quite catch what he said, but I'm sure he's excited. Also competing today, the Whale Shark. He's not a whale. What? He's actually a shark, but a gentle giant. Well... Oops. He's been known to swim up to 24 kilometres a day, so he's a tough competitor. And our titchiest contestant yet, the larval fish. They are baby fish and our first juvenile competitors. <laughs> One contestant the size of a peanut, another the size of a lorry, and the final the size of a 100-seater airplane. Oh, and the humpback whales have started their journey all the way from Australia to Antarctica. Rumour is they can travel up to 5,000 kilometres each way. As ever, the whale shark is moving steadily. He has size and strength, and with a mouth like that, he needs to constantly eat plankton. And look at the larval fish go. They can swim incredibly fast for newborns. And of course, our humpbacks made sure their babies were ready for the big journey by fattening them up. Ah, crafty move. They've got so much fatty blubber. I should imagine it's like wearing hundreds of puffer jackets. Yes, when travelling in freezing conditions, they need all the extra layers they can get. And of course, these ocean cruise liners are heading home. Having given birth to their calves in the sunny waters of Australia, it's time to go back to Antarctica. That's why the race is so vital to them, but it's even more important for the little larval fish. As soon as they're born, they need to find a safe reef. They're racing for their lives. In fact, if they were the same size as us, they could swim the 100-metre race in 3.5 seconds. That's 13 times faster than the world record. For pure stamina and strength of journey, the gold medal for distance swimming goes to the sturdy humpback whale. Thank you. Don't let him make an acceptance speech. We'll be here all night. Oh, uh, well done to the humpback whale. It's fair to say his stamina is second to none. They're right up there with our precious gold medal winner, the tuna, whose warm blood trick gives them both stamina and speed. Wow, what a start to our reef games. Let's take a look back at the highlight. We've seen a string of talented ocean athletes. First up was our 100-metre sprint. The octopus looked promising, but he ran in the wrong lane, leaving our super-sprinting baby turtles to win the prize. The tuna certainly raised the bar with his stupendously swift swimming, linking him to the sprinting turtles. And in the freestyle, it was our floaty flatworm who won the gold over the sultry sea slug, otherwise known as the Spanish dancer. For pure stick-it-out stamina, the hard-working humpback with his 5,000-kilometre trek grabbed the gold with his long-distance swimming. OK, let's get back to the action. <laughs> and now for one of our most popular events, the deep diving event. This is where athletes show just how deep they can go. First up, the mild-mannered minke whales. Hey, dudes. One of the smaller whale species, they're highly flexible. And our main rival to our favourite competitor today, the delightful dolphin. <laughs> Hiya, I'm a cheeky dolphin, me. Look what I can do. <laughs> and representing the reptiles is the slithery sea snake. Snooze. <laughs> Wow, a snake that can dive. He's done really well to qualify. Yes, the sea snake has evolved from his land cousins and is able to hold his breath and dive remarkably well. And our outsider today is the human deep diver. It'll be interesting to see how they compete against the natural-born divers. And it's dive time for our competitors. 
Okay, the sea snake is straight down. He's got a single lung that fills his whole body so he can stay deep for hours. Cool! Next up, the diving dolphins. Haha, -ha! -ha, these fellas sure are cheeky. Look at them flapping around like that. Not a lot of movement from the minkies. Looks to me like he's still chilling. Oh, no, I do believe he's decided to take part in this contest after all. It's a dive. Over to the humans. This fella here is a real-life free diver who takes part in a sport called No Limits Diving. Problem is, the human body is not designed to dive deep, unlike our delectable dolphins, who are able to cleverly shut down some of their body while they're deep to save oxygen. Back to the snake. He's diving up to 90 metres. That's the length of Big Ben. Extraordinary. The human is definitely the outsider in this event. See, he even needs special equipment like this pulley to help him go down. It's certainly quite a dangerous sport for a human. They just don't have the lung capacity and extra features our marine superdivers have. The advantage for our marine animals is that they have specially designed lungs and molecules in their blood. This allows them to make the most of all that delicious oxygen. Oh, and what a magnificent dive from our dolphins. Grace, speed, and all done in their usual confident and charming manner. And they've been awarded the gold because they can dive as deep as 600 metres. No surprises there. Thanks to all our dive-tastic competitors. The dolphin links back to the humpback whales because they're both amazing divers. <laughs> From deep diving to skydiving, it's time for the high diving event. First up on our rock podium, we have our booby birds. Silly name, even sillier faces. Whatever. Yes, this one's sticking his head in the water. I wonder if he's suffering from pre-event nerves. What's going on? I think it might be due to his competitor, the frigate bird. <laughs> My, what big wings you have. Well, the boobies are harmless dozy birds, but are very skillful. They can dive, float, walk and swim. The frigate birds, on the other hand, are highly skilled skydivers, but cannot take off from the water or walk. What's going on? They're also notorious bullies, and with wings as long as two and a half metres, no wonder the booby is looking nervous. <laughs> In an event like this, who knows what stunts they may pull to get the gold. Oh, and true to form, the frigates are soaring and circling, assessing the situation. As they can't take off from water, they use those hooked beaks of theirs to snatch and snaffle prey. <laughs> Get the boobies! Clearly, they're not just interested in winning the gold, but will use any opportunity to snaffle other birds' food. Hey. Well, I'm disappointed in the frigates. That's not very sportsmanlike at all. Luckily, the boobies are still focused on their diving. What's going on? Oh, look at that dive. What speed, what height, what grace. Absolutely amazing. Diving from a height of 50 metres and at a speed of up to 60 miles an hour. Well, it just goes to show, Gemma, that true sportsmanship always wins through. Well, there's clearly no disputing the judges' decision on this plunge diving event. The frigates, with their cheating ways, have allowed the boobies to win gold unchallenged. So, yet again, our gold winners, the dolphin and boobies, are linked by the fact they're both winning divers. <laughs> the ocean is full of animals that are multi-skilled, as we're about to find out in our next event, the air... and water by Avalon. Which animals perform as well in the water as they do in the air? It's time to find out. Let's welcome our first fish out of water, the Eagle Ray. They are almost superhero-like with their bat wings. They can grow up to 1.8 metres. That's as long as an average size human. Oh, see them gliding effortlessly through the water. Next up are female turtles, a mistress of endurance and hard work, both on and off land. And to the other extreme, the mischievous mudskipper. Oh, and a disappointing start by the female turtle. She's not very dynamic on land, is she? Well, to be fair, she has been on the go for six months solid, swimming to this island to lay her eggs. 
but she's a tough cookie, this one, known to swim up to 48 kilometers a day. <laughs> Just look at the mad mud skippers with leaps and hops like that. Looks like they're very comfortable on land. Well, they've had lots of practice because amazingly, despite being a fish, they spend 90% of their time on land using their ready-made gill oxygen tank filled with water. Now our female turtle is entering the water. I expect more from her water ability. Oh, and yes, true to form, she's like a different turtle. Very graceful indeed. And on to the eagle ray. You can't fault these fellas for their water action, but we haven't seen any air action yet. They need to get out of the water soon or that's going to lose them the race. I understand the eagle rays are well prepared for this event, Barney. That's right, Gemma. Eagle rays jump regularly in the wild to get rid of parasites. So this event should be a done deal for them. Oh, wow, as I'm saying it, look at them go. What an incredible jump from the eagle rays. Surely that can't be beaten. And our eagle rays have won the gold for the prestigious air water biathlon. Um, the mudskippers are not impressed with that result. But the eagle rays are celebrating wildly. <laughs> and of course, like our booby gold medal winner, the eagle ray uses both air and water for their amazing display. Yet more amazing action in the reef game. Let's take a look back at the highlights in our reef cap. Our diving dolphins won the gold for being able to dive as deep as 600 metres. They're so multi-talented. And shame on the cheating frigate birds with their food-nicking ways, but it allowed the boobies to dive in and claim the gold medal in the high dive. Strong contenders all round in the air and water biathlon. With their leaps and jumps, the eagle rays wow the crowd. Welcome back to the Reef Games. It's time to continue our seafloor sports. It's judo time, and please welcome the favourite contestant in this round, the Blue Ringed Octopus. I must say that it's a bit suspicious that the crab is the only other contestant in this round. What? Well, uh, rumour is that being one of the most venomous animals in the world, he's either eaten all his other opponents or used scare tactics to frighten them off. Do you mean he threatened them with that toxic bite of his that can kill 26 humans? OK, well, let's see what he's made of. Oh, and he's got him completely pinned down. There is no chance of this crab fella escaping, I'd say. What a mover, so fast. He has amazing muscly arms, and this combined with his lack of bones means he has strength and flexibility. A lethal combination, it has to be said. Strange that the crab isn't retaliating with his sharp pincers. Ah, well, that's where the venomous bite of the octopus comes in handy. It doesn't give his opponent, in this case the crab, any chance to escape. Bye-bye. Uh, um, isn't it against the rules to eat your opponent? Well, it seems the gold must go to our venomous opponent noshing <laughs> blue ringed octopus, even if he is a little shellfish. <clears throat> not a popular choice with the crowd, but of course, let's remember that he's not just here to please the audience. He needs to eat to keep his energy levels up. So, like the eagle rays, whose magnificent leaps of faith help them get rid of parasites, the octopus is not just here for the gold. His judo skills guarantee him a good meal. <laughs> Over to the field now for our next exciting event. Well, I have to say, this next sportsman doesn't look like he has the potential to be a hero. I have to agree. I've seen more excitement at the Ireland Coconut Rolling Contest. Oh, there seems to be some movement. I think we may see some action soon from this unlikely sportsman. He's advancing slowly. Which field sport will he pull out of his shell today, I wonder? Oh, dear, I think that fish may be under the illusion that our competitor is just a harmless seashell. Hello, can I help you? Ta-da! 
Oh, look at that jab in action right on target. Unfortunately, that fish learned the hard way. That was amazing action for a snail. I wasn't expecting that at all. How does he do it? He's a bit of a sea stalker, smelling out his prey using his big nostril called a siphon. Then he shoots out his venom-laden javelin. That's amazing. Uh, fish, I think maybe you should move... Oh, oh, well, bye, fish. Surely he'll get full marks for this performance. You can't argue with this geezer. His aim is perfect and he always hits the target. It may be goodbye for those small fish, but it's gold for the cone shell. The red lights oh, on. Hang on, we're on. Shh, we're on. Shh. Get back um, on camera. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> what a spectacular finish to a spectacular year at the Reef Games. Don't you agree, Barney? Absolutely. What a collection of talented competitors we've seen from all corners of the reef. I don't know about you, Barney, but I won't forget the baby turtles sprint to the finish. What an achievement. So moving and so well deserved. And their quick pace connects them to our tearaway tuna, speeding through the ocean at the speed of 43 miles an hour. Oh, what amazing memories we'll always cherish of the free form swimming, the flapping, the rippling. Will we ever see such swimming again? For pure endurance, we mustn't forget that medal-winning performance from our humpback whales as they battle through their 5,000-kilometre trek. Endurance connects them back to the tireless tuna. And who could fail to raise a smile at our delightful dolphins with their deep diving, which links them to the humpback whales. And speaking of brilliant divers, what about the boobies? Absolutely fearless. Unless there's a frigate bird around trying to pinch their food. Hey! Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's a leaping eagle ray. Another air and water performer. The eagle ray definitely deserved their win in the biathlon. Funny, there was an empty stadium for the blue ring octopus. Yes, he seems to have killed or frightened off all his opponents. And let's face it, who'd argue with the deadliest animal in the ocean? Well, maybe the equally deadly cone shell. With his venomous javelin tooth, he hits his target every time. The emotion, the tears, the anguish, the laughter. What an amazing reef game. Well, that's it for another four fish years. Thanks to all our fishy medal winners who use their athletic skills to survive in and out of the water. We, we salute, salute you all. all.